Now today I'm catching up regarding viewer requests, in this case for camshaft position sensors. How to locate them, remove them, test them, and replace them. And I will include them in our check engine light playlist. This playlist has helped millions of people. If you may have a problem in the future, this is a good playlist to have because there's a lot of stuff in here that can really help you out. But that being said, let's begin. Now, of course, the first step is just locating the sensors. If you have no idea where to look on your engine, the best bet is just to do a quick web search, specifically on your vehicle. Typically, you'll find diagrams and schematics showing where the sensor lives. You can even visit a forum that deals specifically with your vehicle. Now, a camshaft essentially is just a piece of metal that rotates in the engine. So I know on this Honda, there's a camshaft here and another camshaft right here. So it makes sense that these sensors have to be within the vicinity. So even if you still have trouble, if you could find a schematic of where the camshafts live on your engine, you can deduce where the sensors live. So if I look on the valve cover, I see one right here. This is one of the camshaft sensors. And same back here. Just follow it, follow it. This is the PCV valve, that's not it. And then right back here, this is another one. So we have two, because there are two camshafts, one for the exhaust, one for the intake valves. We have two camshaft sensors. So here at the 12 o'clock position, there's a tab. Pressing down on the tab, pulling from the body, not the wiring. Okay, that's it. And then right here is a 10 millimeter fastener, okay? Over here on the driver's side, for sensor A, once again, there's a tab, roughly around three o'clock position. As you can see, it's a little tight. Press on the tab, and then I'll push my other hand. There we go. And again, right on top, 10 millimeter fastener. Now, depending on the vehicle, you may have certain obstacles. For example, as you can see here, this is a video that I did in the past, and I believe it was for an oxygen sensor, and the strut bar on this Acura is just clearly in the way, and I had to remove it to get access or, or better access to the sensor. In this case, on the S2000 here, really it's pretty wide open, we're lucky, but there's a wire loom right here, and I have a tab. I just want to remove this from its mount, so I have a little bit more working room. Okay, something like this. And then we can remove the fastener. I tend to place my finger underneath so I don't drop it. Now to remove these, sometimes they can be a little stubborn. So I'm just rotating the sensor with my right hand and my left hand I'll be pushing up. It may block the camera, but ultimately essentially pushing up and rotating at the same time. There's an O-ring on these, and that's why they really solidify on here sometimes. There we go. There we go. So, you, so as you can see, this O-ring sometimes will solidify on here. But that's it. So let's remove the other sensor. Okay, so once again, 10 millimeter fastener. Make sure it's firmly on there. These tend to be quite easy to remove. Oh, sorry, hold on a moment. Okay. Now these tend to be easy enough to, re to remove the fasteners because it's a plastic body. So from the factory, they're not very tight, otherwise they would crack. And then again, rotating, this one's a little bit easier. Let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see. Okay, here we go. Easier to remove. Okay, here's the other sensor. So now we have both sensors on the bench. Once again, you can test these sensors while they are still attached to your engine or to the engine. I'm just doing this because it's easier to film and you can see precisely what I'm doing. Now this is a digital multimeter. These are very inexpensive. This one cost $20 off Amazon and all of the tools I have here I will include links in the description box below. Now testing these sensors, you need to do a resistance reading. So if you look at the multimeter, every multimeter has a black lead and a red lead. Okay, so you just, you just plug in the leads. 
the leads into the multimeter. And then you have a number of different options on what you want to do. So in our case, we need the omega symbol. That stands for ohms, okay? It's just a resistance. That's all it is. You're taking an electrical resistance reading from the sensor. That's all that you're doing here. So a good sensor, sensor you should see between 1.8 to 2.5 kilo ohms. Okay, now on your multimeter, it may say something like 1,800 ohms if it doesn't convert it into kilos. In other words, just look at the meter, okay? Let me just make this as simplistic as possible. So, all I have here are just two wires with alligator ends. These are not necessary, just makes it easier because I can just simply attach the wires directly to the prongs as opposed to me trying to hold the leads. This just makes it easier and we can see what's going on here. If you're curious what these sensors do, I'll just uh, list that in the description box. I think most people really don't care. They just want to fix their car and move on. But I will have that in the description box if you're curious. Okay, so let's watch the meter. Let's see what we have. Again, between 1.8 to 2.5 is average. So here we have 2.1 kilo ohms. Now we know it's kilo because we see a K right here. Okay, now some multimeters, if they're not digital, this is a digital multimeter, you may see something like 2100 ohms. Same exact thing, okay? So you may have to do the quick math, but ultimately, this is a working sensor. If this sensor was not working, you would not see a reading here whatsoever, or sometimes they will be very, very, very high readings. But ultimately, this is what you want to see. So if we do the same thing with the other sensor, we should see a reading. Two point two roughly kilo ohms. So both of these sensors are working, and that's how you can quickly test these without any sophisticated scan tools, nothing crazy, just simple basic tools. Now let's say you, you test every sensor, both sensors on your vehicle, the camshaft sensors, but you still have a trouble code. Maybe there's a wiring issue. Let me show you what else you can try. Now looking at the harness connector, if you take a look inside, you'll find these two metal points, okay, right here. And these meet up with the metal prongs inside the sensor. So if the sensor's working perfectly fine, you may have an issue with the wiring. So let's make sure that this is getting power. Now to make sure that we're getting power, I just have a paper clip that I cut in half. Now, you could purchase test leads by all means, but I'm doing this based on what most of you just have home. And most of you probably don't have test leads. So this is just a paper clip cut in half. Now, I don't know which lead to touch here, okay? Let's just make sure we're, or pretend we're doing this blindly. So I just want to test to make sure that we're getting power, but which prong is power? In other words, typically you have power and ground. I just want the power side. So let's try this one first on the left. So I'm taking the paper clip and just pressing it into the connector, okay? Then once again, the multimeter, but now we need to do a volts reading. So you want volts DC. Make sure it says DC, okay? If you see AC, it won't work. AC is household current. You want DC. Now typically, you won't see a big reading here. It could be something like half a volt. Not a lot of power. So I'll make sure you guys can see this, okay? So now what I'm going to do is get those or grab these wires with the alligator ends, okay? Place one on the paper clip, like so. This will go to the positive lead. Now this makes a difference. When you do the resistance or the ohms test that we did on the sensors, in other words, it doesn't matter which, where the black or the red lead goes, but for this, it makes a difference. So we want this going to the positive lead of the multimeter. And then black, this guy right here, this goes to ground. This is any good metal point on the vehicle. A lot of times, here's the exhaust manifold, this will be a good ground. Okay, so we just, we just need a good ground. So all that I'm going to do now is just turn the ignition key on. I'm not starting the car. 
just turn the ignition key on and let's see if we have a reading here. Okay, so the key is on and I'm just touching the black to ground. And there we go, we have 0.4. Let me just zoom in here, just in case you guys can not see this. Okay, here we go, touching ground. Okay, 0.4. So that verifies that we're getting power. Now let's say you don't see anything here. Doesn't necessarily mean you have a problem. Just means, it just means test the other lead. So let's say we, didn't, we did not see a reading there. If I go to this side, and I'm sorry for the talking a little fast. I'm actually just getting over a little bit of a cold. Okay, so if we go to ground, nothing. Absolutely nothing. If you take a look at the multimeter, look closely. You see how it says MV? That's for millivolts. Very, very, very small voltage. And this isn't doing anything. Absolutely nothing. So you want to make sure you see a good volt reading. In this case, it's half a volt. Let's test the other sensor. Now I have the black lead already at ground. This makes it a lot quicker. This is really the better way to do it. So I could just quickly touch these prongs. So here we go. And there it is, 0 0.4 volts. If I do the other side, nothing. That's millivolts. So it's the left prong in this case, and we have 0.4 volts. So that tells us that the wiring is in perfectly fine shape. Now if you do this test and you're not receiving any power at the harness connectors, don't assume you have a computer or an ECM problem. I would first start by looking directly behind the harness connectors. So in other words, where the wiring enters the plastic body. This is where I would check. Don't forget, chances are your vehicle is a number of years old. This one is 21 years old. So who knows how many people have worked on the vehicle, what the previous owners have done. And all it takes is one really hard pull to mess something up. I would not suspect a computer problem unless there's a host of problems. Then that's something different. We're just talking about we have one issue for the camshaft position sensors. Now if you cannot find a break at those points, there is a tool that you could purchase. It will find any wire break within your vehicle. And I'll include that link in the description box below. Unfortunately, I do not have it. Otherwise, I would show it. It's not something I need often enough. They're not inexpensive, but it will find any break anywhere within your vehicle. It's a very, very nice tool to have. And wrapping this up, if you do need to replace either sensor or both sensors, Purchase the factory OEM parts. Do not go on eBay, buy some cheap Chinese knockoff. Even on Amazon, you have to be careful. Purchase OEM factory parts because then you know you're getting the right part. So that's my recommendation. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.